No, mi plan. Yeah, that's magic. I'm great. <laughs> He's in the building. Who's in the building? Mr. Cooney is in the building. Good evening. Today is November 21st, 2022. I call this meeting of the University of City Council to order. This is Thomas Weed and Paul Mr. This is Bat here. This is Blackfield. Mr. Rock here. Mrs. White. Mrs. Wu? Here. Mr. Cooney? Here. Mr. King? Here. There are motion to excuse Mrs. Blankenbaum and Mrs. White. So moved. Second. This is some uh, motion by Mr. Brock, that and by Mr. Gould. This is Tom's new call vote. Mrs. Sachs? Aye. Mr. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Mr. Cooney? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Any motion carries. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> First item is reading and disposal of journal. We have seven minutes from September 9, 2022, that were tabled at the last meeting. Is there a motion? So we'll have a motion to approve the minutes of September 9, 2022 by Mr. Cooney. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Rowe. This is Thomas Rivaldo. Roll. Is it back? Is there any discussion? No. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Were there any changes to the minutes? No, I just had an opinion about that. So I asked this before. I wasn't sure if there was discussion about it. Should there be discussion on motion to adopt? Well, there's there are changes. I, I suppose there are changes. Okay. It's not changed. Sure. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Sack. Um, I just. Something that I'm not sure the public knows, but these minutes are 59 pages long. And it is, I first want to acknowledge Mrs. Thomas for um, writing them up for data. Uh, it was quite a, quite a yeoman's job. But um, I'd like to say that it, it felt kind of unnecessary um, due to some unsubstantiated slander that uh, has become a pattern, uh, whether it's the president's council or state guests, that's unbecoming of our city's leadership as it contributes to a divisive environment. And I want to make real clear to differentiate something that's an attack and something that's a healthy debate and disagreement from one another. Because when we disagree, it should be on the merit of the issues, not on Merit of the people. So thank you for letting me say my, my thoughts. Thank you, Mrs. Sachs. 
as long as we are stating thoughts here, I think I would add to requiring a critical council to do a verbatim transcript of the minutes, which is supposed to be a summary of business that's conducted, is, is a waste of city resources. So whomever here requested a transcript, I think that was an unfortunate decision, but we have a 59 page set of minutes, which aren't truly minutes as much as they are a verbatim transcript of the meeting. And thus, that is what's before us here this week. And I would like to this is actually <laughs> Is there any further comment on this? Mrs. Sanders. Thank you. There will be verbatim requests when the words that are spoken attack people rather than discuss the issues in a healthy form. I know that I asked for some portions to be written verbatim, and the reason is that people need to know what goes on in these meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sachs. Would you care to elaborate as to which portions you requested for today? Not in this one. Oh, yes. That um, you, and it's not just this meeting, it's past meetings when you have slandered me and slandered other people. And that is just not acceptable of the leadership, the decorum, and uh, what our residents. I'm entitled to. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Sanders. Glad to know the slander, the alleged slander has been written down so that you can vote on this. I don't understand your comment. That's okay. No, it's not okay. Yeah, what did you mean? Oh, uh, Mrs. Thomas. No, I'd like to know what it means. Somebody want to call the question the motion? Uh, uh, it is a motion for her approval. Very good. Okay, think that's a call for the question, Mrs. Thomas. Mr. Sachs? Aye. Mr. Lapp? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Mr. Cooney? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. The motion carries. We have a set of uh, minutes from November 7, 2022 as well. However, I think there was an error with Dropbox. Mrs. Thompson and I were talking about this earlier. I don't think anybody actually got them. I would ask for a motion to table the November 7 minutes. Motion to table the minutes. Motion to table the minutes on November 7, 2022. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Cooney. Motion is made by Mr. King. Is there any discussion? Actually, I have a motion to table it would be a discussion. Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Pat? Aye. Mr. Rapp? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Mr. Cooney? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. Okay, items tabled. Uh, number four additions and removals from the agenda and referrals to committee. I would ask for a motion to table item D. Uh, there's a companion item that should have been. That should be considered with it that isn't here. So, my suggestion would that uh, be that item G and a companion motion regarding the funding um, be placed on the next agenda. Is there a motion to take one, item G? Motion this is for, for, for the uh, the, the Washington Society State Work Intersection. Yes. We move to the uh, next council meeting. Yes, yes. There's there's a companion piece that 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 should be considered with it, where we accept where we accept funding that we applied for from NURSD um, to supplement the funding was previously applied for and accepted by this council to pay for the additional uh, amount of bid. Uh, Agresta has agreed to hold their prices um, through the end of the year. Is there any concern about uh, the project moving forward? Any timelines that may not be able to be met? It is delayed. No, it was not delayed, but uh, to move it to the next council meeting. No, in this instance, it should not make a difference. I think we're looking at an April data for this project, even. It's not going to proceed until after until spring. So, uh, so okay. motion to table item G by Mr. Cooney. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gould. This is Thomas. We call the roll. Mrs. is Aye. Mrs. Rod. Aye. Mrs. Gould. Aye. Mrs. Cooney. Aye. Mrs. King. Aye. Okay, very good. Item is table.
Next is, uh, are there any other additions in the rules uh, for this agenda? There are none. I'll move on to uh, item five comments from the audience. Speakers are limited to five minutes. They got 15 minutes for meeting additional time upon discretion. Is there anybody here there is to address the city this evening? Seeing none, we will move on then to reports and communications from the mayor and take the action thereof. The in person University Heights Civic Awards returned to campus at John Carroll University. The event was a celebration of some of the people who are working hard to make our city an even greater place to live, work, and raise a family. For the record, the award recipients included members of the Juneteenth Committee, Faye Benson, Dr. Alicia Sloan, Luana Anderson, and Tommy Berry. Stephen Wertheim was named Citizen of the Year. Judge Ann Walton Keller was public servant of the year. Kimberly Kirkhoff and Maggie Balsano were the employees of the year, while June Drayton and Sergeant Mark Bronio were named co workers of the year. The Zazz on the Circle was recognized in honor of their 30th anniversary. Tina Reynolds is education or, or educator rather, of the year. The following received Good Neighbor Awards Colin Kennedy and Zachary Sluko, Dr. Brianna Keyboard, Dr. Crystal Bruce, Elizabeth Engelhart, Jeffrey Pearl. Dr. Lieutenant Kevin Von Hobbs, uh, Michelle Fowler, Rick Brenner, and Wendy and Robin Gernstein. Thank you to all who attended and all who presented. We're already looking forward to next year's event. Thank you to 188 Ohio Pump for donating 75 Heinz gift cards for distribution to University Heights residents for the holiday season. This year, we notified residents that we already notified, and cards were playing within 30 minutes. Thank you to two pairs of city residents who wish to remain anonymous for donating an additional 15 gift cards. That 90 gift cards in the middle of this Thanksgiving season. Happy Thanksgiving, one and all. Looking ahead to December, it is the return of the annual sock drive. A fresh drive through of warm socks is much desired and a much requested item this time of year at local shelters. We will accept donations of new socks at City Hall and other locations to be announced after Thanksgiving. Look for details to meet with November 28th and in City News next week, or bring your socks to the next City Council meeting. Never miss a community event again. The University Heights Community Calendar, powered by Yolo, is up and running. Create a free account today so you can be up to date on community events in and around University Heights. We've partnered with over 30 groups and organizations on the calendar. Sign up, go to universityheights.com. Speaking of upcoming dates, there is a rescheduled joint meeting of governments. City Government of Queen Heights, of University Heights, the CHUH School Board, and the Heights Library Board for Wednesday, November 30th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. in the Heights High School Auditorium. A week ago tonight, I had the honor of addressing the Lee Woods Cub Scout Troop 620 at JSU as part of their Building a Better World adventure. Part of my charge was to raise with them and discuss an important issue facing this community. I shared with them this. This might seem like a surprisingly obvious thing, a simple thing, one that everyone here can understand. We all need to treat each other better. We need to be understanding. We need to listen as much as we talk. We need to be respectful of each other and of our differences. It's okay to disagree. No one should hate anyone else over mere disagreement. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That said, I would quote Black American writer James Baldwin, who once said, We can disagree and still love each other unless your disagreement is rooted in my oppression and denial of my humanity and right to exist. We don't have to agree with each other, but we do have to respect each other. We have to live and let live. Freedom and respect mean we do not oppress others. We do not tell someone that they have no place in our society. We must not discriminate against people based upon their race, their religion, their gender, their age. We must not prejudge people. We must eliminate our prejudices. 
And we have to actively seek to eliminate prejudice and treat people fairly and respectfully and equitably. And since we were meeting in the basement of Jesus, I asked the room whether they all knew the prayer of St. Francis. And we went over it. I'm not going to recite here, not in a public meeting. The office of mayor is not a religious office. And I do not lead public prayers. I have to be a mayor for people of all faiths and of no faith. Nevertheless, in this particular prayer are some truths that are greater, universal, certainly bigger than any one religious tradition. I think we could all benefit from remembering them as a society. To bring love, to bring hope, to bring joy. To be understood as to understand. It all starts where we live, with ourselves and our neighbors here in University Heights. It is something we must all do better together. And sometimes we will mess up. We will call someone a name. We will call someone our enemy. We may tell them that we hate them. We may fight them with words or even with fists. When we mess up, we must resolve to do better, and then we must be better. And from there, the scouts had some great questions, everything from questions about public safety to what is my favorite ice cream. Finally, on a somber note, for 35 years, the city of Cleveland had not lost a firefighter in the line of duty. And that changed over the weekend when firefighter Johnny Tetcher, a 27 year career firefighter, was struck and killed on the job at a collision scene on I 90. Fire crews had reported to the collision scene. Seemingly, one motorist tried to drive around the emergency vehicles and hit Johnny. The suspect had been taken into custody. Anytime a firefighter is blocked from the line of duty, the brotherhood that our firefighters come together and mourn together the loss of their brother or sister. This one is, however, especially personal to me, as I first met Johnny Tetrick when we were both children. The Johnny Tetrick I remember most is the fellow six-year-old I played kickball with at recess at Oftenburg Elementary School. I remember he had the biggest smile on the first day. I don't want to pretend that we were close when we weren't. He was a wrestler. I was in pain. We didn't stay in regular contact, but I, I always knew him to see him, and we always said hi when we saw each other. Being in the same class in high school, we had occasion to run into each other now and then. It has been a while since I had seen him. But I knew he was a Cleveland firefighter. Running into him one night a few years back, we had talked about his work and compared what we were both doing to serve. Each and every person in every profession has a life full of experiences with people they love and who love them back. Johnny was no different, leaving behind a wife and three kids Countless friends, Clevelanders, whose lives he touched over his short 51 years on this earth. My condolences to them all. And let this be a reminder that we are on the road, operating on the news, to be safe and be smart. Is there any place we need to be so bad? That we should try to maneuver around the freeway accident scene with an emergency fire crew on the ground. Firefighter Tetrick, like all the men and women in our fire and police departments, was prepared to put his life on the line to protect ours. But harm should not come to anyone needlessly. We must all look out for each other and be careful out there. Governor DeWine ordered flags to have staff around the state of Ohio for Johnny Tetra. They will remain down until sundown, the day it was determined. Thank you. This concludes my report. 
Next on the agenda is reports and communications from the city council and the taking of action thereon. Are there any reports at this time? Seeing none, we will then move on to item eight, reading and disposition of ordinances, resolutions, motions, and consideration of agenda items. Item A is an update from law director on House Bill 563 and discussion of short term rental regulations. So if you comment, we look forward. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman Blanchfeld asked me to give a, a brief update on House Bill 563. It's a bill that was introduced in the Ohio House earlier this year that would preempt a local regulation of short term rental units. Um, the bill is fairly simple. It indicates that, um, number one, a municipality may not enact any ordinance or, or regulation that prohibits operation of short term rental units um, across the board. Um, and secondly, um, it further limits um, municipal regulation of short term rentals to anything that is geared towards health and safety or the prohibition of certain. Um, activities such as the sale of illicit drugs or um, emotional prostitution, those kinds of things. Um, the status of the bill is that it was passed by the House and it is currently in the Senate committee. Um, if you had asked me at the end of the summer what I thought would happen with this uh, legislation, I would have predicted that it would be had been passed by now. Um, I don't know whether it's being um, taken up in the main duck session um, and have not heard um, what the likelihood of passage is. Um, I do think that um, given the fact that there's been some delay, it would be appropriate for the topic to be referred to the building house committee um, and for that committee to take up a discussion of what local regulations we might prefer with respect to short term rentals. Um, we can certainly focus on the health and safety issues that we know um, won't be impacted whether or not this legislation passes, and we can discuss some other um, items that we need to keep an eye on us with respect to um, local regulations um, include, let me back up, other, other Ordinances in Northeast Ohio communities include things like the requirement to register, um, registration of tenants. Um, there's uh, there are licensing requirements. There are ordinances that limit the number of days that you can use um, a, a particular residential structure for short-term rental. Um, so there are some some precedents out there that um, will be appropriate for consideration. Um, and based on that, I think um, we also may want to have a committee meeting and, and roll up our sleeves and develop something that would be appropriate for the city. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Would it be in order to ask for a motion to approve this bill to the building and housing committee? That may have been, this is my bill's intent, which I'm curious if someone would want to make that motion if we could entertain it. It, would, it certainly would be appropriate. Um, we have seen the water here in the ESR committee, um, but I'll be prepared to present a building and housing on this topic whenever the council is appropriate. Well, I mean, no motion is necessary if anybody wants to speak today. In the absence of motion, it says discussion. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Cohn about this? Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Appreciate the update. Item B is Ordinance 2022 56, accepting opioid settlement funds and directing placement of such funds in a separate fund and turning in emergency. This is on third reading and emergency. Yes. It's Kennedy. Good for you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, we are looking to establish a separate fund to be in compliance with the terms of the settlement agreement. We did receive a distribution of about $2,500 several months ago. That is in 
been held in the general account for the time being. The body of the ordinance contains a provision that allows us to establish a separate fund and then subsequently we can re record the revenue into that fund. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Are there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Any discussion on this matter? If not, is there a yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, yes, thank you. Oh, please, please. Um, I know that we had I referred this to the uh, safety committee at the end of September. Um, at the beginning of September, we reviewed some documents so we could have a conversation with. Um, it was either the, the September meeting or the October meeting uh, where we discussed some potential plans that the administration may have for, for programming. Overall, the conversation was that there weren't specific programs that the city had or that we think we might have other than perhaps a publication of another program um, that uh, we would use the money for. Nonetheless, there were some additional documents that I had requested from the law director uh, in relation to the grant of funding, which he emailed to me on October 26. Um, our November safety committee meeting uh, was canceled to make way for um, the, the uh, we had an executive session, session an executive session, uh, and, and uh, the police and fire chief informed me at that time there was nothing pressing for, for that agenda, so we made way for that. Um, I'll bring this up again at the October meeting with the additional documents and perhaps we can have, uh, excuse me, the December meeting, um, and perhaps we can have a more detailed discussion on what, if anything, we would do with the money that uh, should have come in, and also whether or not the proposed publication um, and advertisement of the separate program is an appropriate use of funds given the restrictions that were outlined in the documents that I've seen on the website. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Dolan. Um, Chief Bill, you're here. I know Chief Buckner is out today. Bill, family on this. Um, my understanding from our conversations is that I mean, we're talking, I think, about was it $2,600 maybe? That's the small mark, yeah. Yeah, that, that really what we were looking at with that sum of money, just $2,600 a year. Shoring up the programs we have as opposed to creating a new program that uses twenty six hundred dollars annually. Would that be would that be accurate? Would that be my recollection of this part of the committee meeting. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Cool. What programs are you showing up? Yeah, but uh, Chief, if you could approach the microphone so you do. Other than the advertisement, I didn't know there were other programs we have. Um, I, my recollection is that we talked about some of the already established programs in the region and using uh, the money to maybe create a publication to promote those already established programs. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant by, by publication. When you say showing up other our, our already existing programs, by whether there's some fortification or supplement or addition to the actual programs you're talking about, or just the advertisements that I mentioned? Yeah, that's Okay, thank you. So there was uh, there was a section in the, the um, restrictions that talked about publication and, and advertisement, but it seemed to be limited to, and I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry, right now, um, but it seemed to be limited in scope to what could be an advertisement. Um, Ms. McConville, did I ask you for an opinion on that already? Uh, then I will. Um, uh, I will do that after bringing this document back to the, the meeting in, in uh, December. Uh, but I appreciate you sending it over so that you can do it. Okay. Well, then it sounds as if the gist here would be to table this item for this evening and bring it back at the first meeting of December, which would presumably be the hour following your well, we go ahead and be your next safety committee meeting. Um, I'll make a motion. Okay, so we have a motion accordingly, Mr. Gould. I'll second. Second by Mr. Sachs. Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Sachs, aye. Mr. Rock, aye. Mr. Gould, aye. Mr. Cooney, aye. Mr. King, aye. Okay, I am stable to the next meeting.
Item C, Ordinance 2022-69, establishing permanent appropriations for the year ending December 31st, 2023, and declaring an emergency. This is on the second reading. For the 2023 budget, City Council and the Finance Committee Chair in particular asked for three things. That the budget be proposed this fall for passage this year. And I did present the budget in November as requested. Number two, that the budget be balanced. And I presented a balanced budget. And number three, finally, and perhaps most controversially, that I, the administration, made no proposal for expenditures for modernizing our methods of solid waste pickup to defer that discussion until after the budget. And even though I disagreed with this, I respected it and I honored it and proposed no such expenditures at this time. I have met all three requests. In return, I simply would like my budget passed. There have been two finance committee meetings. There are no changes that need to be made to balance the budget. There are no further expenditures that the administration seeks. I attended the last finance committee meeting. It appeared there were some cuts that might be proposed in order to buy some additional fire vehicles, including ambulances. But this ambulance is not due for replacement until at least 2024. After consulting with the fire chief, the administration is not seeking this additional fire equipment in the 2023 budget. Accordingly, as this is second reading, I ask for a motion to adopt the ordinance and approve the budget. Is there a motion? Mayor, uh, regarding the uh, ambulance, there, it's my understanding that we have to appropriate it in 23 in order to get it um, built in, into our firehouse by 24. So that's why it's the 23 budget. Well, that isn't what the administration or the fire department is. So if it's not in the 23 budget, you won't have it in 24. Right. We would be seeking to put it in the 24 budget. To have in 25 to have when it's ready. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. A motion by Mr. King. Is there a second? Well, while we wait a second, is there any discussion on this agenda? Mayor, yeah, Mayor. Um, my understanding from out of the uh, most recent finance meeting, there, there were uh, some adjustments made uh, or to allocate funds towards the ambulance. Should that be a correct way to put it? I just ran out of the ambulance, I'll make it clear that right. 30 seconds ago, so we'll have to go back mm -hmm. and make some adjustments. But, so, I um, it seems that the And Mrs. Mrs. Weiss was not in attendance in the last finance meeting. She's not in attendance here. Um, I would prefer to perhaps table the uh, this particular uh, issue uh, to allow for uh, your terms so that we can finalize it since we're basically so we're ninety five percent there. I think it would be appropriate to make sure everybody uh, is present on board. And it's just so it's just minor details need to be resolved in person. Um, well, I had a little bit last year, obviously, in regards to the budget. Um, I understand it's nothing will be impacted uh, to perhaps table until the next council meeting for these issues, for these minor issues to be resolved. And we can move forward going into the end of the year for them for the budget as it's as expected. Okay. Is that a motion to table it, Mr. King? It would take precedence to the motion that is currently on second. I would make a motion to table uh, this agenda item. Okay. At this time. We have a motion to table this agenda item. Damn, it's me. Is there a second? Hi, Mr. King, is there a second? I don't know if we have to really table it because it's just on second reading. We're not here to pass it today. In fact, the Finance Committee has not made a motion. 
to send us to council. So it's a little premature to even have it on the agenda at this point. It's nice that it's here. We, it's part of the public domain, part of the public record. Everybody can review it, but the plans committee did not make a motion to pass. We would not make a passage. But then um, what do you mean? And there's going to be a meeting on December the 8th to go over the two dozen or so flagged items so we get more information. And I do owe Mr. Kennedy an email of those items where I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So I will put my thoughts this week and get that into an email format so that um, we can have those answers for the December 8th meeting. So, I have a few. so you're on the second meeting. Um, and I, I think you should do one of three things. You should either pass it or reject it or table it. Because you're you are on the second meeting. I don't want to give the impression that it, my concern if there were to either uh, accept the budget, that there's some open items that need to be resolved. If we were to not ask that they give us an indication that it's an unfavorable condition. It is not. Uh, so I think tabling may be the most appropriate at that time. Okay. Well, we do have a motion to table, and we have the law director's guidance here that we're either talking about passing, rejecting, or tabling. There are two outstanding motions, neither of which has a second, but the motion to table takes precedence as a matter of parliamentary procedure. So I would seek then a second for the motion to table. Just to clarify, is that until after the whistleblower meeting? The next five weeks is summary discovery. Yeah, which is after the next council meeting. And the next council meeting will be at the 19th. Mm -hmm. That'd be correct. Sounds right. Double check the day. Is there anything else that's in turn? Yeah. Is this motion table end of December 19th meeting? My recommendation will be table and, and to the after the finance committee meeting on December 8th to be brought back to the, on the agenda for the December 19th council meeting. My phrase that right? I think so. Um, I, I will second a motion if it includes upon a um, motion by the finance committee to bring to council. The finance has to vote on the budget to bring to council. Yeah, I think that would really be. Yeah, that would, I would agree with that. It's already here. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the finance committee would be on the clock, so to speak. And it seems like. Um, well, what I'm saying is, if it requires a third meeting, it's possible. Um, it won't be ready for passage on December, uh, whatever that December meeting is. Well, so it, it, it makes sense to have the committee approve budget to send to council, and then we can entertain it. I would, uh, yes, Mr. Rock, I would agree. Well, I would also then suggest to Mr. Kennedy that we prepare for the next meeting to be read as first reading a continuing resolution for the new year in the event that the Finance Committee is unable to complete their deliberations on this budget. You know, yeah. time to pass for the September the December 19th. Just so I understand you, you talk about a temporary budget. Correct. Because um, I don't want to find ourselves on December 19th with only this agenda item. And if for some reason we don't pass it, we'll need to call a special meeting to have that uh, continuing, uh, to, have a temporary, to have a temporary appropriation special appropriations. And I'd rather make sure we have one of the other ready to go. We'll have both ready to go and be able to pick the, be able to pick one as opposed to not run out of time to find ourselves without a budget. Okay. Thanks. So we have a motion to adjourn uh, to table item C. Motion to table item C, which is ordinance 2022 69 for it to uh, allow for finance committee to pass the resolution for recommendation. And then I'll second that. Okay. Motion by Mr. Cooney, second by Mr. Rock. Mrs. Thomas, did you get the uh, particulars on that motion? Very good. Move your name, Mrs. Thomas, all along. Second. Um, sorry, just a discussion on that, uh, Mr. McConville. Um, 
Ordinance 2022-69 attaches to it the initially proposed budget by the administration as attachment A. If there are substantial changes made to that attachment by the finance committee, how does that affect at all the readings of the initial? So you would undertake a, a motion to amend, um, and then it, depending on how substantial um, the amendments are, um, we, we typically look at that conservatively, so we recommend that you consider that as well as a first reading. So the yeah. meeting if they were substantial enough to be subsequent, which I anticipate yeah. there being twelve potential changes or. Should, you know, that this would be something that would be, it wouldn't be that house second or third reading. It would be as though it was on first reading, and I would recommend that if you were to adopt, um, that you would suspend the rules and adopt, or you could simply um, have it read as amended and consider the first reading uh, on second reading at your next meeting. And as a procedural matter, this was returned from the table. As it is with the current attachment, there were substantial amendments that were made, and therefore the attachment was replaced by the attachment approved by the finance committee. Um, would we be able to amend from the floor the agenda item so as to suspend the rule and pass that budget? Correct. At that meeting? Yes. So we wouldn't need to place it on as an as emergency approval. Prior to the meeting, to meet with That's correct. Right. Thank you. That was my question. Thank you for your contribution. Um, sure. Mrs. Thomas, if you're ready to call the Mrs. Sachs? Aye. Mrs. Rock? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Mr. Cooney? Aye. Mr. Kane? Aye. A very good motion carries and the item is stable. Next is item D, Ordinance 2022 72, authorizing the transfer of funds from the general fund to 100 to the CIC fund 800 and declaring an emergency. This legislation is sponsored by Mike Sarah Michelle Weiss, who is absolutely standing away here and who wanted to present on this proposed ordinance. Perfect. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, in reviewing the uh, funding for the CIC, uh, I believe House Mayor White spoke with Mr. Kennedy uh, to review whether or not the transfer of funds to the CIC um, had yet been made this year. I do not believe that it had. Uh, it would require this motion in order to achieve that transfer, which was previously contemplated by the budget. Did I say that right, Mr. Kennedy? Uh, yes, with one caveat that the original budget contain a provision for a transfer of twenty five thousand dollars. Council are we approved transfer of eight thousand six hundred and some dollars um, to fund the survey so that's already been recorded. So the sixteen thousand dollar amount is the balance of the twenty five thousand dollar transfer. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Is there any discussion on this? Yeah. Yes, Mr. Yes, Kay. I don't know if anyone in this room knows what what those funds will be used for. I know I don't, Mr. Kay. Maybe somebody else does, Mr. Kay. Oh, that's Mr. King, that's really at the discretion of the board, the CFC board. Um, and they would vote on um, first of all including that in their budget. Which council approves and then to spend that money for the purpose that the board can have a discussion and then go over. I'm not aware of anything. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Is that Mr. Kennedy? Sure. Go. And do you know the, uh, Mr. Kennedy, do you know the current balance of the, the CSC bonds? Um, the current balance is approximately fifty-six thousand dollars. Cash in bond balance. Hey, Mr. Green, are there any outstanding invoices that were required to fund in CSD for to include this amount? 
Uh, I believe the only outstanding liability we have now is an open purchase order for legal services. So not aware of any bills that are in the process, but that's the only that has been provided for the end of the year and so pretty nominal amount of total is about three hundred and ninety dollars. The current funds that are available in the CIC account would be able to cover the current that legal bill. Yeah, so I said the purchase order is about three hundred ninety dollars. That's open. That's in the event though we get a bill, and uh, we do have fifty six thousand dollars of cash and fund balance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. Any further questions? Discussion? And just more of a comment. Um, I believe since the formation of the CIC, the city uh, council has approved sharing for 25000 the CIC uh, annually. So this is just another annual uh, transfer. And then in the 2023 budget, it's budgeted that we transfer again another 25000 So this is uh, normal business practice for us. It's just an annual. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rock. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Rock. I think also um, one of the issues that is arisen in addition to the currently open expenditure is that Mr. McConville uh, has provided his notice to the CIC of his intention to withdraw as counsel for the CIC. Uh, the CIC is then has been placed in the position to require uh, retaining its own counsel. So there are anticipated additional reports uh, to review several members. Uh, we intend to undergo a review bylaws of the CIC, um, and there is potential for litigation. Um, and so, for all of those reasons, uh, the transfer of the, the amount will be approved. Um, Mr. McConnell has provided to the CNC a list of names of individuals who uh, may be appropriate to fill that position should they be selected by the state. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cool. We had a CIC meeting on November 9th, and as I stated at that meeting, the administration will not support any further transfer of resources, no money, no real, no real property to the CIC, unless or until we agree and implement a restructure of the organization. I will not authorize further funds to be transferred to the CIC at this time. If the board will not work together to make changes, then the CIC may simply wither on the line and no more public dollars transferred to them. CIC may spend down what it has and go to land. Or we can restructure and then work together again on real estate projects as we originally intended and stated on the public record when we created the CIC. More optimistically, I believe the $56,000 on count is sufficient to effectuate a restructure if that restructure is going to happen. But put another way, if this legislation passes this evening, I will be it. Thank you. Is there a motion? So there is a motion to approve uh, ordinance number 2022 72. Is that on emergency? Yes, on emergency. On emergency by Mr. Rock. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mrs. Sachs. Any discussion? We'll take two votes. Mrs. Thomas, if you please take roll first on the suspension of the rule. Mrs. Sachs? Aye. Mr. Rod? Aye. Mr. Bull? Aye. Mr. Cooney? Aye. Mr. King? And Okay, and then on the next motion, that's now a passage. One is reported the rules to be suspended in the request for the majority of five. So the ordinance will go on second. And withdraw that motion and not do an emergency. Well, no, because we have to do an emergency to pass without meeting it twice. Oh, gotcha. yeah. You pass on an emergency at the next meeting. You can pass it on an emergency at the next meeting, or you can pass it 
Well, you, yeah, I mean, yes. Or if there's one you can amend to remove the emergency clause and pass in the second meeting and will become effective in 30 days. Not from the first yeah. so, Or because you're not waiving the three, the two meeting rule, you won't be waiving the two Just meeting rule. Or there's another alternative that Mr. Kane could change is both, and we hear our emergency rule. But you could you could have asked for reconsideration. Well, I guess it wasn't that. Okay. Okay. All so right. So the, the vote fails. The vote on suspension fails, and the manager moves to second meeting the next meeting. It's the longer if you're indicating the, uh, the the vote to suspend the rules fails and uh, ordinance 2022 72 will be on second reading at the next regular council meeting. Next is item E resolution 2022 73 uh, in support of an application for a grant from the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District Community Cost Grant Program for a stormwater management and relief sewer project. At the intersection of East Scarborough and Canterbury Roads. This is on emergency, Mr. Jim. Yes, thank you, Eric. Um, the next two items I didn't hear an effort together. Uh, it uh, involves a uh, cancer relief tour to be put in uh, from the intersection of East Scarborough and Canterbury down to Meadowbrook. Um, I was at this uh, at the council here a couple of meetings ago, and we received a grant for 50% of this project from the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. Uh, I informed council that I would be uh, then uh, asking the sewer district if we could use our community cost sharing dollars for the other 50% of this project, and they have agreed to that. And that's what this is here. There's an agreement. It has to be signed uh, by the mayor or by council uh, with the sewer district for the other 50%, approximately $86,000. The entire project would have been 73 uh, and change. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but I think we have it in the packet. Uh, I highly recommend we uh, approve to uh, this item. And we have 100% fund. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brown. I have a few questions. Um, I guess my first question is why we have two agenda items for the same thing? What, what's the difference between what we're going to be doing this agenda item versus letter F, which is the motion to, I'm sorry, motion to enter into an agreement with any ORSD? For the community cost share agreement, it's just a procedural thing. I think yeah, it's really that they require. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit at our staff meeting this morning. It's really a bit of bootstrapping. You could simply approve item two, but our our um, the way it was presented for the agenda to Kelvin was in two items, and our custom is to approve the main application along with the contract. So, okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, would Entering into an agreement, I know I'm talking about an item that we're not on that agenda item right now, but would entering into an agreement require us to do the project if we don't get the grant? The agreement is for the grant. I understand, but if we don't get the grant, are you still in agreement with any RSD to do the uh, Scarborough Canterbury project at 50% plus our 50%? Yes. We are signing an agreement with them. Uh, we, I, I think the answer to your question is no. We, we, the, what the agreement says is that we will get the grant and, and having gotten the grant, we'll do the project. That's what is contemplated in the agreement. If they don't pass this, we still have 50% of the cost. Correct. Which we've already agreed well, to. That when we're going to build the project, we'll have to put 50% of our own dollars in there versus taking these cost sharing dollars from the district. Okay, so we're not approving work to do this sewer project until we know we have any grant dollars that we have, correct? We haven't started the project. I don't know what the budget is, right? I'm understand for this year. So that's for next year's consideration, right? Right, for 2023. Okay, so when the actual work happens, we don't have the grant, because the second half of the grant, we could still uh, push the project off, correct? Or does this put us in a bind in which we're entering into an agreement to do the work. I think we've committed to the project because we already accepted 50% of the money. 
I think we've committed to it with our own funds. And then I went and got another 50%, so we didn't have to use our own funds to understand the question. Well, the reason I'm asking is when we did our budget for this year, we were being told it's 100% paid for by other entities. This would not come out of our pocket. So if 50% is coming out of our pocket, um, you know, I look at that budget item again. I'm Mr. under the impression that this is no cost to the city. If Mr. Chuny, is there a certain circumstances under which we can get the future staff on the meeting on the books received with the project? No, this is that we have it. We just have to sign the agreement. Exactly. Right. 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 What, what you're describing, Mr. Rock, is the thing that They can't. Well, okay, I don't need attitude. I'm asking because I want to be sure. Excuse me. Did you read the package? Let me say this. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Mr. Ricardo, if you explain. If if we don't need if we did not have the cost sharing funds, right. we would be obligated to come back and seek council approval um, from the allocation of the balance. But even success. So that was my question. That answered my question. Thank you, Mr. McConnell, for being a little patient. So okay. That was question number one. Um Okay, so this is for a grant for the community cost share program. It's the other 50%. What was it, 80,000? Yes. First 50% was an MCIP grant. Yes. This is the community cost sharing value, two pots of money. Okay, so if it's awarded and we get the full grant, then 100% of the project cost is covered, correct? Correct. Right. Other than construction inspection, as we talked about before, during the um, finance period, that was not how much was that? Seventy-five hundred dollars. Seventy-five hundred. I think we put that in the budget. Okay. Um, so it covers all the design engineering fees, just not the construction inspection. That's correct. And do they have any particular rules? Construction inspection. They do not. Okay. It's yeah. up to the locals. Up to the local. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Mr. Cheney? Is there a motion to approve resolution 2023-73 on emergency? Mr. Mr. So Any motion by Mr. Cooney? Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Honor. Is there any discussion? If not, this is time to call the roll first on suspension of rules. Mrs. Said, aye. Mr. Lack, aye. Ms. Willard, aye. Ms. Cooney, aye. Ms. King, aye. And then on the main motion. Mrs. Sands, aye. Ms. Lack, aye. Ms. Will, aye. Ms. Cooney, aye. Ms. King, aye. Hey, motion carries. Mayor, just going to comment the next item. I know you, you tabled it under your uh, report. Oh, you can table G still, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, right. Okay. that's how you spend your time with G. Sure. Uh, item F is motion to enter into agreement with NURSD for community cost share agreement between NURSD and University Heights with East Scarborough and Canterbury Relief Sewer Project. Joey, do you have anything to add? This is a nothing to add. Okay. okay, is there a motion to uh, enter the agreement? I have one question. Mr. So on your packet here, you listed a probable construction cost of 148903 So since this has not been bid yet, um, how will that work if the cost uh, does not align with the probable construction cost? Correct. We haven't designed it yet, so that's just yeah. the planning number, and we have to come back to council. So it was back yeah, it's still fully designed. So you're going to come back for the bid for rest, and then once you open the bid, you'll come back, and then we can make decision one way or another. Okay, thank you. Very good. Any further discussion on item? Is there a motion? So motion. Motion by Mr. Cooney. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Rock. Any discussion? Mrs. Thomas, we call the roll. Mrs. Sad, aye. Mr. Rock, aye. Mr. Will, aye. Mr. Cooney, aye. Mr. King, aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Jim. I was going to make a comment on G. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, G is tabled. 
And uh, I just wanted to mention that um, the reason the, the table that asked that near the table is uh, it's the same thing. We already have an agreement with the sewer district for the funds for this project, but when we did it, it went to the not funds. But we went back to the sewer district and asked them for more. So there's an amendment to the agreement we already have with the sewer district that has to be passed before we can work a contract with the rest of so I'll, I'll bring both of those back to the next meeting. Um, they have to amend the agreement first, which accepts more money from that same type of we cost and then we can award the contract to the rest of them, which we haven't talked. Very good. Thank you. Next is item H, a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing legal proceedings, personnel, and real estate matters. Uh, the administration does have one personnel matter that it wishes to follow up with council about, and thus we would ask for a motion uh, at the conclusion of the regular portion of the legal call executive session. We don't have the motion at the executive session, the conclusion of the regular portion of the that discussion. Is there a motion? So, motion by Mr. Gould. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. King. Mrs. Thomas, we call the vote. Mr. Sack? Aye. Mr. Lott? Aye. Mr. Gould? Aye. Mr. Clooney? Aye. Mr. King? Aye. A motion carries. We will have that executive session. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take very long. And the regular portion of the meeting. We now turn to reports and communications from the directors of the departments of finance and other departments. And we'll start with finance, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Mayor. Two quick things. Um, I'm following up on the list that I compiled that came out of the finance committee meeting. So, sure, if you can. Yeah, I'll get you that. Let's make our points. I just want to make sure that, that mine is in sync with yours, but I got about a half of that list already okay. answered. And then I'll be meeting with our auditors next week to go over some issues um, prior to the end of the year to get things set for the audit. That audit will start at the end of January in 2020. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Any questions for Mr. Kennedy? Seeing none. During the response, we come to no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. McConville. Public Safety Police Chief Roger has been excused from this meeting. Public Safety Fire Chief Berger. No report tonight. There are no reports tonight. The service, Mr. Corn. We're going to get a leaf update. Just an update on our leaf collection that is correct. We completed two rounds. We're halfway through our third round of the city. And uh, as soon as the snow melts, we'll get that going again. Today was a uh, day we took a break. Uh, second item is tree planting. We completed the tree planting project. And the next uh, tree pruning and removal project will begin in December. Very good. Does that include some of those trees on Bush now that have one resident point out those zones? No, it does. That will be in the removal project. Right? Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Corn? Mrs. Sam. Thank you. Um, I understand there are signs, temporary signs that are posted where the um on the streets where the trees are collected that uh, there's no parking during that time. We, we have done that on several streets where we have parking issues, yes. Okay, Summerfield Road has parking issues. If you would please post that. And that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Sachs. Any other questions for Mr. McCorney? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Will go. Uh, Mr. McCorney, I just wanted to follow up. Um, to my group of reporters, we have a citizen that brought a city owned lot to our attention. I uh, wish there was a dead tree, apparently. Uh, has the service department made any evaluation of that tree to determine whether it would be appropriate to put on a future removal list or if it needs emergency removal? It does not need to go emergency removal, and it will be done with our regular removal this, this year. So I know sometimes when you're living next to something like that, the, the, the question is today we've never looked at it to know whether or not it's fall, fall or spring. We've gone out, we've looked at it, it doesn't need to be taken down immediately, um, but we'll be on the future ones. So that, that is correct. That's a, that's the other part of that email was uh, pulling the leaves off of that lot, which we did do. Awesome. Thanks so much. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gould. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Any other questions for Mr. Corey? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Next is um, housing and community development. Mr. Engelbrandt. We are having a report at this time. No report this evening. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Engelbrandt. Next is city engineer, Mr. Chinney. No report this evening. No report. Thank you, Mr. Chinney. Next is communications and civic engagement, Mr. Cook. No report, Mayor Esther. Kind of not to explain most of what I would have given in the report in your report. Yeah, I took all your fire there. <laughs> no, thank you for letting me do that. Thank you. And showcasing it up front, but as you said, I took your report. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, economic development, Mrs. Drucker is uh, has been excused from this meeting this evening and there is no report. We now turn to reports of standing committees and taking of action thereon. Building and housing, Mrs. Blankfell uh, was excused from this evening's meeting. Does anybody from the committee have a report? Not, there is no report. I will move to community outreach, Mr. King. No report. No report. Thank you, Mr. King. I can talk about it, Mr. Rock. Uh, yes, ma'am. We will have our meetings start up in January for the zoning review. Um, I thought I had a date, but I don't. So I will follow up and go to our next meeting on that. Yeah, so I think I might have that date. No, I must not have saved it. So I think it's Wednesday, January 25th at 6 p.m. Um, I don't want to confirm. So okay, I'll get back to you. There, there is time for January. We'll be we'll back. So okay, well, thank you, Mr. Uh, finance. Mrs. Weiss is absent and excused from the evening's meeting. Anybody from the finance committee here to make a report? Yes. So, Mr. Rockman, finance and finance advisory committee have their first meeting regarding the draft budget, and we anticipate the final meeting in the next two weeks. Um, I believe the date for we went out for that. Three weeks ago, January 8th, December 8th. Thank you, December 8th. Yes. Um, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thursday? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. That's correct. So, December 8th at 6 o'clock. So, um, we had our first meeting last week, and there was a few items we needed additional information from. Um, and we'll go over that next meeting. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rock. Recreation, Mr. Kennedy. No report, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Safety, Mr. Gould. No report, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Gould. Service Utilities, Mrs. Sack. Thank you. Um, the next Service and Utilities Committee meeting, I just want to confirm this because people have been asking me, is January 4th at 6 p.m. Um, since this wasn't mentioned in the Council of the Whole or the Service Director's report, I believe tomorrow uh, at 4 p.m., we have a site visit at the Shaker Heights Service Bureau. That's correct. Um, to view how uh, they do their service, um, that's the last of our facilities uh, assessment related trips at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Sachs. Now, the committee the whole, Mrs. Weiss again is uh, excused. Is there any report on the committee the whole? Yes, Mayor. Um, yes. Last week, the committee of the whole and joint facilities committee had met at the Solon service yard and go to review their facilities. And as Ms. Sachs mentioned, we'll do our last uh, tour and shaker. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> be there. I'll be there. <laughs> That's that's the end of the committee floor report. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Uh, that concludes the. No, actually, it doesn't. Uh, are there yes? Thank you. Are there any reports of special committees for taking action there? Is there any unfinished or miscellaneous business? And if there is none, then we will proceed to our executive session. I do not anticipate any further business on the record beyond the motion to adjourn after the conclusion of our executive session. So, uh, one of the folks who wanted to stay, I don't think there's anything we're missing if you leave. So, thank you. Our next uh, regular meeting uh, will be uh, in December. Uh, that will be uh, Monday, December 5th at 7 p.m. here. So we will now convene the government to the executive session. The rest of you, thank you.
Thank you, Kelly. Give my comments. Give me some back. No, that's a year. Thank you. 
Which is perfect because I was going to ask you 12 years. So, you know what?
Is there a motion to return to regular discussion? The exit to regular session return, and Mr. Gordon has moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Now, Mrs. Sack, the council call vote. Second. Mr. Rack. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Mr. Cooney. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. King. Is there a second? Second. Council call roll. Mr. Zach. Aye. Mr. Rack. Aye. Mr. Gould. Aye. Mr. Cooney. Aye. Mr. Cooney. Aye. Mr. King. Aye. Mr. Gould. Second on that. I was. And it's 8 24 p.m. in the other region. Thank you. 